Hey everybody, this is Brian. This is our fifth video in the Java series. Today we'll be discussing variables. Now what are variables? Well, if you backtrack and you go back to our last few lessons, you heard me talk a lot about classes, how a class is a blueprint. A blueprint for an object. For example, let's say you have a blueprint to build a house, and then when you create a house, you're creating an object or an instance of that class. Well, what goes into a class? What goes into this blueprint? Well, variables are one thing, along with methods, but we'll get into that in a separate tutorial. So just go to Google or whatever search engine you use and type in Java primitive types. Now when I say primitive I don't mean dumb. They're actually pretty powerful. And once again remember a lot of the documentation that you'll find out there says Sun but it's actually Oracle. Oracle bought Sun. Alright, moving right along. What is a primitive type? Primitive types exist in all operating systems. They are the basic building blocks of most programs. Um, unfortunately, the building blocks are not the same on every operating system. For example, an int or an integer, which we'll discuss in a minute, may be one size on Windows and another size on Mac and another size on Linux. So to avoid headaches, what Java does is it says, okay, these are the primitive types and they will exist equally on all operating systems. So the Java platform installed on every operating system is guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be the same size. So I recommend you go out and research primitive data types because we're going to go through this rather quickly. But just for the sake of conversation here, a byte. This is the small one. Byte is an 8-bit sign 2's complement integer, meaning it can go from negative 128 to positive 127. Now what does signed mean? You'll hear signed and unsigned a lot. Signed means it can have a negative. Unsigned means it cannot have a negative, but it becomes much bigger on the maximum size. For example, a byte unsigned, I believe, is 255. Uh, that'll be your homework to go research that. Short, short is a data type. It's 16 bit. What does this number in bit mean? Well, that's the amount of memory it's going to take up. Two complement integer, maximum value of negative, th or I'm sorry, minimum of negative 32, maximum of 32,000. Um, as with you know a byte, same guidelines apply. You can use a short to save memory in large arrays, in situations where memory saving actually matters. Now, most modern computers have so much memory it really does not matter. Um, the staple workhorse of most programs is called the int. This seems to be the favorite with most developers. It's a 32-bit sign to complementary integer with a minimum value of, wow, look at that, and a maximum value of another big number. That seems to be the most popular one. If you need more size, there's a long, which is bigger. And then you get into floating point processing, which is uh, used in like uh, big, big mathematic calculations, uh, 3D programming, things of that. With floating numbers, it's called a float because the precision floats, meaning you will lose precision. It's really close, but it's not perfect. Double is another floating point. Um, basically familiarize yourself with these primitive value types. Boolean is a very simple one it's a on-off or a true-false. It can only be true or false, nothing else. Uh, a character, uh, well this letter C is a character. It's one letter. Now Java is Unicode. What is Unicode? Unicode is a standard that encapsulates literally every language in the world. So you'll have English, Arabic, Japanese, etc, etc. Um, as a result, there are 65,000 possible combinations. Now, some of you have worked with something called ASCII before. ASCII is 0 through 255. Java is Unicode. You should be aware of that. Another thing, this isn't a primitive type, but it's used quite frequently as a string. What is a string? A string is a sentence like this is a string. Now, a string is not a primitive type. It's a class. Remember, we talked about classes being blueprints. Well, a string is a collection of characters, this care type. So under the hood, a string is really just a collection of these characters. And they all have default values. For example, almost everything set to zero. You notice how this L is at the end of a long? 
That's called a literal. You're making a literal long or a literal float, literal double. Uh, characters always start with the slash. They also have this single quotes around them. Strings can be null. What does null mean? Null means that the variable has not been set. There's just quite literally nothing there. We'll go over that in a second. Booleans, once again, are true or false. And, you know, once we talk about literals, go out. That's your homework. Just find out everything you can about primitive variables. Now we're going to actually work with some primitive variables here. You can see we've got Eclipse open. We've got our our class with our main method. If you don't know what that is, I suggest you rewind and watch a couple of the previous tutorials. And we're going to make an int called age. And how old am I? Uh, 36. Now you notice how we have the semicolon at the end here. In Java, you have to have a semicolon at the end of every statement. This is legal. You can have your statement go several lines. I think you can even do it. Yep, you can do multiple lines like this. But if you want to maintain your sanity, try to keep everything on one line here. Now, how is this structured? You notice how we are declaring a type, an integer, a name, age, and then we're setting the value to 36. Let's do another one. Boolean, remember this is the light switch. And we will say false. Bowling can be true or false. That's it. Now, one thing you should notice is Java is case sensitive. In other words, if you do a capital F, it still says false, but it's got this red underline around it. Well, it cannot be resolved to a variable. What does that mean? Hmm. It means you need to use the lower case version. Same thing goes with the types. If you use capital B, well, I kind of lied. That's a wrapper class. What is a wrapper class? A wrapper class is not like MC Hammer. He doesn't go out and wrap, but um, a wrapper class encapsulates a primitive type. In other words, it turns a primitive type, a Boolean in this case, into an actual class. So what you should be aware of is a lowercase b is the primitive type, and uppercase b is the wrapper class. I want to show you something. Notice how when you type light dot you get all these things. What are all these things? Those are part of the wrapper class. Now if you change this back to a lowercase, hit period again, nothing. Okay, let's actually delete it and try it. Hmm, nothing. Why is that? Well that's because this is a primitive type, it's lowercase. There's no extra properties here. But the wrapper class has all these values and helper methods to help you with certain things. For example, you can, let's see here, you can convert it to a string. You can use wait, that's for multi-threading. You can parse boolean. In other words, you can turn a string into a boolean and back and forth. You can you can get another wrapper class out of it. Things of that nature. It's object-oriented programming. For this tutorial, let's just stick with the primitive types. So you have an age 36 and a boolean of light, which is false. We're saying the light is off. Starting to run out of time here, so I'm going to have to wrap this up. And I'm just going to say, what can you do with a variable? Well, we have already used the system out dot print line. Whoops. And say, my age is. Plus age. And we're not using the light, so you notice how it has this local variable light is never read, meaning it's we're never using it, it's just wasting memory. So we can actually get rid of that. We will run our program. My age is 36. Well, I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop me a line. Uh, once again, your homework is to go out and research Java primitive types. Thank you for watching.